both. So we spend a lot of time in here and we do our our day-to-day classroom stuff because I do homeschool with the kids. Mm -hmm. do, do I look here or do you look at you? Well, look at the camera. Oh, look at the camera. Okay. So we're here in our classroom. We spend a lot of time in here because this is our homeroom classroom, but this is also where we shoot a lot of our music videos for our YouTube channel. And we do stories, we do videos on um, preparing homeschool curriculum and things like that. So we spend a lot of time in here. Yeah. And we have it all set up right now for Christmas and for the holidays. So when you just started, what was your first video about what? The very first video we did we were was for Halloween. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this little song for the kids and my husband being a music producer and a songwriter, he said, "Well, let's let's create the track for it." And then me being an actress, I'm like, "Well, let's make a video for it." So we put that out and then people liked it. So we made another one and all of them are just little songs that came from actually working with my own kids and what they needed in that moment to learn. So when it was time to learn the days of the week, we made a days of the week song. And instead of just sitting there and singing it, we got all dressed up in costume and people started searching for that. And now it has like 6 million views. So it's always been things that even my mom, my mom was a teacher for 30 years. So she would say, oh, the kids really need this. And then I would make a video about that. And that's kind of how it all exploded. Tell me a little bit about the education in America. Um, right now, education in the U.S. is in a very interesting spot because we have a lot of kids who left schools because of COVID. And so for me, I have two kids that are in like regular public schools, and then I have two kids that are homeschooled. And their ages are very different. So my daughter who's in high school, she attends actually a college and a high school program right now. She was out of 400 students, 40 got accepted to this program. And so now she is part of this program. And for her, it's worth wearing the mask and going through all of that in order to be in that program. My, um, my son after that, my 12 year old son, he's in middle school. And when he was pulled out of school for COVID, I started to notice that he got really depressed. And I think he missed that socialization. So having him in school now, even though he has to deal with wearing a mask and he has to deal with all these different restrictions, I think it's better overall for him because he's such a social kid. Um, and, and he's already had a lot to deal with having epilepsy and it, having to go through all that. I think that it was important for him to be in a program. But then with my little guys, like this little guy, he's, a racer. He, a racer. Um, he's doing a whole year of homeschool and he, this is his classroom. This is where he gets to learn, right? Do you like doing school with mama? Yeah, that's good stuff. And are you going to show Dragon your video games? I did. Oh, yeah, oh you showed him already? He's a very good driver. Yeah. All right, go, go play a couple more minutes. We're going to finish up. <laughs> Thank you. Go, 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 go. As a parent, if you want your kids to go to some prestige university, when you have to start preparing for that? Um, I get this question a lot because, like I said, we do artist development with younger artists and a lot of families come in and they have these big aspirations for their kids. And they're like, well, you graduated from Yale University, master's in drama. It's like this big, you know, huge ordeal. And a lot of young theater kids want to make their way towards that. I. I honestly did not even want to go there. I was like ready to go be on Broadway. I was ready to start my career. But my dad, my dad was like, you need a, you really, you really should apply this, this, this something they can never take away from you is your education. So I applied thinking there was no way I was going to get in because there's like 5,000 people audition and every year to be in this program. And then I was one of 16 students who made it into that program that year. Um, but I, I had started moving towards theater when I was in fifth grade. Like that was the first time that I fell in love with theater. I was think it was in fourth grade. Okay. Okay. Is that my phone? No, my phone. My oh, it's your phone. So I was, so the first time I really started doing theater, I was in fourth grade and I did a Shakespeare play. 
And prior to that, I'd done all these like Serbian concerts and talent shows and singing. But fourth grade was the first time I really got to explore Shakespeare. And not very many fourth graders like Shakespeare, but I fell in love. And then I went to a high school for performing, performing arts and then a college and then my master's. So I think the sooner you know where you want to go, yeah. the higher chances you have to succeed. And that's what I tell my daughter who's 14. She's, she's been talking about wanting to be a doctor since she was in fourth grade. And she's now on that path. And she's already in high school doing a dual program where she's in college as well. She's working to do that quicker. And I think one of the things I didn't know about as much as I want to teach my kids is that education is very expensive and there's a lot of debt that comes with it. If you don't have full scholarships, if you don't really look at how much the program is going to cost. So I think that's one of our big struggle points here in the U.S. is that we don't have free education. It's that it's constantly you have to pay for it. And I know your son, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky situation. We were just talking about that. And I think that if, the, if there's anything, it's like know what you want to do and figure out how you're going to do it and how you're going to pay for it. So education before, like 50, 60 years ago, was only for wealthy people. Yeah. And right now, some kids can get a grants or can get a loans. What are requirements to get the grants? So for when I went to college, I ended up getting a, multiple grants from different associations, performing arts associations, local grants. I got small scholarships, whether it was like $500 or $1,000, at the end of high school, I had a pot of money that I was able to put towards my undergrad. And then when I got into Yale, I got a full ride for my education part. But then I had to take out student loans to live because you can't just go to school. You have to have a place to live. And so that's where a lot of this debt comes from. And there are grants and there are scholarships or financial aid. But at the end of the day, if you don't live at your parents' house while you're going to school, you've got to have some place to live. And I think that's been, that's another concept that people don't really understand. It's like credit cards aren't magic money. At the end of your time in school, you're going to have to pay all that back. So I think if there's a way to work while you're going to school or figuring out your whole life plan, it's a little bit different because it is still just for wealthy people. Let's be real about it. Like, you have to have, it takes money to go and get an education here in this country. Uh, when you compare degree from some high-end university or some kind of state university, is there any difference? To m what I've noticed, having an Ivy League education opens doors for you in a way that having a community college certificate doesn't. So as soon as I mention that I have my master's from Yale, people are a little bit more willing to say, oh, well, come and work with me here. Um, I think it's something that it's not, I don't wave it around all the time, but when I know I'm in a competitive environment, I can add that and then I will end up getting a job over somebody else. I do believe that. I think that there's value in having that name um, but it's also the value in that education like what I went through at Yale is very different than what somebody goes through at a community college I was put through a very rigorous program and I learned how to create I learned how to build I learned all the aspects of theater of performing versus somebody who's taking a single class and just learning one one aspect of it and then they get a certificate so I think there's there's some of it where I'm like, oh, I went to Yale, so what? But there's other points in my life where I'm like, I, I did that, I achieved that. And I, I see that there is a lot of value in it. Same like somebody who runs a marathon. A runner is like, yeah, I run marathons. But if for the first time ever you ran one, you feel that feeling and you're like, oh, this was a lot of work. I had to train for months in order to do that. And then afterwards you've accomplished it. So I think getting into that school and then Graduating, it's a huge achievement. Can you get some business relationship with the friends from Yale after? Uh, from, so 
when I went to school, I thought there was going to be this thing called the Yale Mafia. And like when you graduate, everybody's going to give everybody a job and it's going to be this network of spider webs of people. And as much as I'd like to say that's true, it's kind of not like you still have to be the best person for the job. I did get a couple acting gigs because writers from Yale were on set and I did get a couple like you know, little pieces of things got put together because of Yale people. And there are people from my class who work with one another still, and then they work with other directors. And it's not just about, oh, I went to that school. It's who you also connected with while you were at school. And um, I didn't really, I didn't understand that part of it. I, I wish I would have gotten to network more while I was there and then taken those relationships out of school. So... I think it's, I think there is an alumni system. Um, it just depends on also if you're good at what you do. Well, did you see some clans somewhere that some people get together in a group? So they like uh, doing by self and they don't want to mess up with another people or? Um, I mean, you, I, I think even like, like some wealthy people, some wealthy group, they want to stay together, they want to invest in some businesses. And I mean, yeah, there was, there are different investment companies that are like based off of being an alumni at Yale, and so I follow stuff on Facebook about that, but um, I have not tapped into it. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know enough about to talk about it. No, no, that's okay. Uh, let me see. <laughs> My brain stopped. Uh, how hard is to be mom of four kids and to make some kind of uh, <laughs> career in the I, entertainment business? Being a mom of four kids is hard, period. So I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of learning that goes into becoming a, a mom. And, um, you know, I think when I first... When I had my first kid, I was kind of like, oh, this is, this is what it is. <laughs> and then baby number two, baby number three, baby number four. Um, it's a lot to juggle. There's a lot of different personalities and there's a lot of times where you're not your own person. And I think that social media and TikTok and just YouTube, it's actually opened up that world to more people so more people are aware of what a mom goes through there's this this idea in u.s culture at least that a woman has to be a perfect mother and working full-time as an executive and it's just i just don't think that that's possible i think that something suffers along the way so either your children suffer or your job has to suffer or you make a decision to focus on your job and someone else raises your children, or you focus on your children and somebody else takes your job. Um, what's been nice about our situation is that we've integrated ourselves within our kids. So I very much, I'm here in the morning and I teach the kids in the morning and then I go to work at about three o'clock and then Daniel comes home from the studio. So. And what I do is fun. I get to go direct theater. It's not like I'm like clock in, clock out, and I, I'm I I get to just go play. Um, and even with our YouTube channel too, it's like there's that started off as something fun. Now it can grow into a business. I think moms are born entrepreneurs and creators because women have this like sense of let's create things and let's make things and you can make a little business i've seen so many mompreneurs and mom businesses pop up and i think that's the way that you kind of can juggle all of it but um i don't know i could never have just given up being a mom i had to do that that was where my heart was so i think everybody's a little bit different Tell me a little bit about the kids with the special uh, needs. Um, okay. How, what kind of programs are available in America here? And so having a son who has epilepsy, I started to do a lot of digging about um, what, like, what, type, what types of education were available. Because at that point, when he was first going to school, he was having multiple seizures, he was on medication. Um, we were in a private school and I would sit in the corner of his classroom while, you know, all the other moms left 
And I sat there and watched what was happening to make sure that if he had a seizure, I would be there for him. Um, I had a lot of friends with children with autism, same thing. They, to integrate them into the classroom, they would go the private school route and know that they were there and able to be part of the classroom. Um, I think that you know, my mom is a teacher. She's dealt with lots of kids on the spectrum. She's dealt with kids that have all sorts of different special needs. She was a te uh, home hospital teacher where she would take the education to the kids and teach them in their own home environment. I think since COVID, things have been very challenging for kids with special needs because they can't all congregate in a classroom and they can't be together in groups. Um, and I kind of mentioned it at the studio, but we got to do this thing with, um, there's a whole school in Boston that has like special programs for children with extreme special needs. And, you know, they're using my YouTube channel to teach them the days of the week. And uh, I think that there's all sorts of different resources available now. And we are blessed that in this country, we do have the ability to have like public education to help serve those kids. But oftentimes I think they need more than that. And then there's other programs in other communities. Um, like we found the Epilepsy, Epilepsy Foundation and I'm sure there's like a foundation for autism and I'm sure there's a foundation for children with cerebral palsy and um, ways that those outs outside sources can also help within the classroom. So it's nice to live in America. It is. I mean, this is the thing is like, I, I feel like, and this is a commentary on current events. There's a lot of people in this country who don't understand how blessed we are. And having a, my dad in my life and to know that he came here with his dreams and his aspirations and how wonderful this country can and will be. Um, I think we are blessed. We're very blessed to be here. And I, I think that, you know, that's one, that's why he's always been proud to be here. And my mom is very proud of this country, but I think that also comes from having pride in where you came from. Um, I think there's a lot of people that are lost that don't know where they came from. And so they feel, like they don't have anything. I feel very much connected to the Serbian people. I don't know, maybe you don't feel connected to me, but I feel connected to you. And I feel very much like that's a part of who I am and I'm very proud of that. But I'm also proud that we have this family in this country and that we are, that we're here and we're making our way. We're fulfilling his, my dad's American dream. Like that's, it's all part of it. And I'm sure you have your look at your shirt today. Oh, yeah. United. You United, like well, let's reunite it. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, and I I know that the whole world is aware of the U.S. right now and some of our own internal turmoil. But it sometimes takes making a mess to figure out what needs to happen. And so I think that we're in a place of transition, and transition means growth, and growth is always good. Thank you very much. Okay. That's it. I don't